In today's video, we're going to cover what is an elevator pitch. An elevator pitch or elevator speech is a short, persuasive speech you use to introduce yourself, your product, or your company. Its purpose is to explain the concept quickly and clearly to spark interest in you and what you do, or to disengage with someone. That's what's also important with an elevator pitch is because if someone is not interested in you, why waste your time or their time? So what is a good elevator pitch? It's the one that gets someone's attention, makes people genuinely interested, genuinely interested in you. Genuinely. Short, snappy, easy to grasp explanation of your company and its products and benefits. The goal of the elevator pitch is to earn a second conversation or a follow-up question about what you do. Because one of the most important factors of an elevator pitch, and few speak about this, is to deselect people. Deselect as quickly as possible. And remember, the elevator pitch comes from meeting somebody at the ground level, by the time you get to the top level, wherever you're going in the elevator, you've been able to share what you do, how you do it, and how fast, and get it done to garner interest or not. An elevator pitch is never an opportunity to close a deal. If you do that, you'll only annoy and put people off. It's an opportunity to close more of your prospects and gather their attention in the first meeting. So how do you create a good elevator pitch? Number one, should be brief. Number two, restrict your pitch to 30 to 60 seconds within those two time frames. Don't include your entire work history, whether you've got 45 kids and a grandmother who walks with a cane. It's not important. Number two, be persuasive. Be clear, be confident. Number three, your elevator pitch should be compelling enough to spark the listener's interest in your idea organization or your background. Three, share your skills. What do you do? Your elevator pitch should explain who you are and what qualifications and skills you have. This is your chance to brag a little bit without a sounding too boastful but share what you do bring to the table. Number four, and important, and I work this with my clients, say it in your sleep, practice, 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 because if you're sound asleep and I bonk you on the head and you wake up, you better know your elevator pitch. It better be so ingrained in what you do and how you do it that it just rolls off your tongue. The best way to feel comfortable about giving an elevator speech is to practice it until the speed and pitch come naturally. As I said, bonking you on the head and it just rolls off your tongue. The more you practice it, the easier it will be to deliver it. The easier it will be to deliver it. When you're a career networking an event or a job interview when someone says, tell me about you. The most common question, you know, if you start off with, uh, you've blown it. I don't want to hear any, uh, or, uh, uh, oh, wow, uh, you've blown it. It should come right out immediately. Practice giving your elevator speech to a friend, or better yet, record it. Record it. Practice giving your speech to a friend or recording it. This will help you know whether you are keeping within the time limit and giving a coherent message, one that is clearly communicated and accepted. Number five, be positive and flexible. You often aren't interviewing for a specific position when you deliver your pitch. So you want to appear open-minded and flexible. Number six, 
Mention your goals. What are you trying to achieve with this? An overly targeted goal isn't helpful since your pitch will be used in many circumstances with many different types of people. But do remember to say what you're looking for. Know your audience and speak to them. If you're talking to a group of women, make sure it identifies and relates to women. Alternatively, if it's men, speak to men. In some cases, using jargon can be a powerful move. I'm American. My vernacular, my vocabulary is North American. When I'm in Asia, I have to be careful about using jargon that only an American and possibly Canadians would get because that'll distance me from my intended market. And if I use the correct jargon, it demonstrates, proves I'm familiar and understand the local market. But be wary of using jargon during a pitch if you're speaking to recruiters who may find the terms unfamiliar and off-putting, especially if you misuse a term. It looks like you're trying too hard. Number eight, have a business card ready. Yes, use business cards, because the people who are hiring you might come from the generation of using business cards. And if you have a business card, offer it at the end of the conversation as a way to continue the dialogue. And Here's a little advanced tip for any of you that might be in Asia, already know this, probably. Hand your business card off with two hands. It shows you understand the local culture. In Japan, you take great pride in using both hands and handing off documents and business cards. It shows you are one step and one cut above the rest. If you don't, you could offer to use your smartphone to share your contact information. Well, here's my line, here's my WhatsApp, here's my Telegram, uh, here's my messenger, whatever it is, when you're dealing with the younger demographic, they may not be using business cards anymore. My age group, we're expected to have it. What not to say during your elevator pitch, don't speak too fast, because then you'll sound rehearsed. You only have a short time to convey your message, but make it roll off sounding natural. Recording yourself, you'll be able to self-correct. It will be hard for people to listen to you if you speak too quickly. Be careful if you have an accent and English is not your native language or if you're speaking in another language and you speak too quickly, you will confuse the native speakers. Avoid rambling. Sometimes when I deal with call centers from a certain country, I can't understand them. And they speak too quickly. As an example, slow down, articulate your words. You're not in a rush. While you don't want to over rehearse and sound stilted, you also don't want to have unclear sentences in your pitch. Articulate your words, pronounce the words correctly. Rambling makes you sound foolish and ill-prepared and lacking in confidence. Give the person you're talking to an opportunity to interject or respond. Number three, don't frown or speak in a monotone manner. Add some emotion, raise the cadence, lower it, raise your voice, intonation matters. The downsides to rehearsing is that it can leave more focused on remembering the exact words you want to use. There was an example just now. I forgot a word. I had to go back and retract it. So imperfect sometimes. Modulate your voice to keep listeners interested. Keep your facial expression friendly and smile. Don't restrict yourself to a single elevator pitch. I have a few, for example. You'll want to tailor your pitch depending on who you're, sp you're speaking to. You may also want to have a more casual, personal pitch prepared for social settings. If I know I'm in the elevator with someone who's a potential client, I'm gonna be prepared and be concise. If I'm at a social event, we're in the environment, if I'm at a wedding, or I'm out where it's somebody's birthday, 
I don't need to sound like a scripted robot that I might say in an elevator. I might be more casual in saying that have a couple versions. Let's talk about a couple examples for startup owners or entrepreneurs. My company develops and designs personalized online sales funnels. That means two things. One, online customers enjoy a flawless user experience tailored to meet their needs and interests. Or two, our clients get automated solutions that dramatically boost sales. We helped our last client increase online revenue by 120% month on month. Sound good? Does your company have any experience with e-commerce automation? Because right here, if I'm in that business and I ask that question and someone starts talking about the weather, they're not interested. They may not have been interested in online automation or maybe they're the janitor and they'll make those buying decisions. So here's an elevator pitch or an example for a job interview. I'm a senior project manager with a creative attitude to problem solving. In my current position as chief of project management at Seton Hospital, the recent challenge has been the reduction of stockroom waste. I introduced a new system and design training programs to be carried out across all platforms. We managed to cut stockroom waste by 65%, which ultimately slashed monthly costs by a quarter. I know cost-saving solutions for the infant ward are amongst your key priorities. Am I on track here? I would ask a closing statement, sort of a trial close, to make sure I've identified the interest of the person interviewing me. I'm sure I can use my expertise to achieve great results with this initiative. Let me give you another one. Elevator pitch example for advertising product or service. As an account executive for ABC Company, I talk to hundreds of marketers per month. 99% of them hate creating reports. It's time consuming, tedious, and usually not your highest priority. That's where our tool comes in. It pulls from all your data to create any report you want in less than the time it takes to pour a cup of coffee. Sound good? These are great examples that I've been able to use in order for you to understand how to effectively use an elevator pitch in your presentation. Subscribe to the channel, smash the like button, and please comment so we can learn how to provide better content for you moving forward.